Alright guys, this is going to be a Protoss versus Terran tutorial, and I'm just going to try to lay out a basic build order and just kind of explain some of the overarching concepts behind the matchup and how best to play it. So here at the start, I'm just sending my probes. You want to send them each to a different patch as you can, just on the fly, so grab them all, and then right click them, and then as they're moving, you can just grab individual ones and right click them to their own patches. That way they all get started mining at once. And so the build I'm going to be doing here is just kind of a one gate core expand off one gate, off three or four dragoons, depending on what I see with my scout. So right now you can see I'm spamming a lot and it doesn't really have a specific purpose other than just kind of keep your fingers and hands loose and just to have something to do so I'm not sitting there staring at the screen. I'm neurotic like that. So. And then first thing that's going to happen is here on eight supply, I'm going to build a pylon. And the next thing up will be a gateway on 10. And this matchup, Protoss vs. Terran, is a very macro oriented matchup. You tend to, most games tend to be involved getting really large armies and big battles. There's some small attacks that can happen. There's a couple early attacks there that can do, like uh, FD push or 2 fac or whatever. But for the most part, Terran nowadays tends to go for a fast third and just macro up till they've got a huge army and then they move out and Protoss has to fight that. So that's kind of the way it plays out. And then in between there's like vulture grass and stuff going on because vultures are so fast so the Terran tries to run vultures into mineral lines and kill probes and be obnoxious with those. And then I got my gate at 10 and I'm getting my gas here at 11. Basically I'm building probes at all times. That's something you always want to do. Unless you specifically know in your build there's a time where you need to cut probes never stop building them. You can shoot for you know, I'd say you probably want at least 60, if not more, maybe 80 probes by the time you get towards late game to be comfortable. And as you can see, I'm sending a scout up. I usually scout after gateway. It's kind of a preference thing. The later you scout, you get a little better economy. But the later you scout, the less likely you are to get inside Terran's base. And on destination, I know that if I scout after gate, I can get in this base. And then on 13 here, supply, I get the cyber core. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about with these numbers, it's just the top right hand corner, the supply. It's basically just how many, how many units you have, and you build new stuff at those numbers. That's like the most accurate way to detail a build. So here I see he's building a racks, and he's got his gas. He's got his gas before his racks, so I pretty much know immediately this guy's going to be pretty bad, because that doesn't really make any sense. Getting the gas that early, he won't be able to use it. And then on 15 here, I'm going to build my next pylon. And as you can see, I'm just scouting around trying to see what he's up to. He kind of lags out at this point. And so the basic idea behind the build I'm doing here is just to get a few goons out to be safe and maybe apply a little early pressure at the wall before there's a tank out, or at least certainly a tank with siege. And then I'll go ahead and get a pretty fast expansion. This build is pretty safe. You have to be confident in your micro, and you have to make sure you're not getting two-fact pushed, because if he's going for a two-factory attack, you'll probably die to that. So if you scout that, you're going to want to get a second gate and a robo, so you can have more goons and observers and maybe delay your expansion just a little bit. Usually the standard is to expand after about three or four goons, depending on what you see. But if you see two fact, which I'll talk a little more about how to tell what Terran's doing, then it doesn't hurt. Then you want to get that second gate and the robo. This, and that's okay because it's going to make his expansion really late. And then, and then what I want to do is, as soon as my cyber core finishes, I get a goon, and then immediately after that, goon range. Because... If he does any early pushes, you want that goon range, because with goon range, you can then outrange the marines. And so with that scout, what I'm looking for is I'm seeing, you know, what he's building, the order he's building things in, which pretty typically is going to be depot, barracks, gas, second depot factory. Um, but I'm also checking SCVs on gas. Like, for a standard Terran Siege Expand, which is probably the most common build I see, Terran will take two SCVs off gas so they can get their command center a little faster and then put them back on. So if you see those two SCVs come off the gas, then you can be pretty sure that Terran's going to be expanding, and you can go ahead and expand off just two or three goons and get your expansion up that much faster. And so what I like to do is when I, I wait for the second goon, and then I start to move out towards Terran base so that by the time I get there, my goon range will finish. And once I have my fourth goon ready to build, I'm going to go ahead and expand, because I don't know for sure what he's doing. I, like, you can tell from the fact he's building a bunker and stuff, he's pretty bad, and if he's building a bunker, it pretty much says, 
hey, I'm not intending to be aggressive at all. So I feel pretty comfortable and pretty safe expanding here. And then what I'm going to do with those goons is I'm just going to go harass the wall. And, you know, you, you just want to try to kill the supply depots at the wall, kill marines there. And you can pretty much harass up until when his, for, when his siege mode kicks in. And then you got to back off. But don't be too overzealous with the harass, especially with something like this. I mean, you're, you've only got one gate goon, so losing a goon is a big deal. But do what harass you can without losing goons. You can just go up the ramp, shoot at stuff. If you get a chance to snipe a tank, do it. But like I said, just be careful. Don't waste your goons. It's more to just make the Terran have to have something to worry about and pick up some of his early marines. And the other good thing that's really important about harassing the Terran's wall is you can see the marine count. So you'll get a better idea of what they're going to do. And if you get up there and you just see one marine, uh, it's pretty likely that he's just expanding or something. And if you're seeing three or four marines, there's a good chance he's doing some sort of FD push, which means that depending on what he sees, he might try and push out at you with like a tank and four marines and a vulture or two. It kind of depends on what he sees. And if you see more than four, it's kind of this new variant of FD, which stands for fake double, where Terran moves out with two tanks and eight marines and rallies vultures. That one's a little scarier to deal with just because there's so many marines. And the vultures can then get behind you and try to lay mines behind your dragoons. You have to micro around them. So as you can see here, you know his bunkers doesn't really defend that. So I'm just kind of harassing a depot, just being a pain. He's got a bunker there, so I can't really do much about that. And now he's got a tank out, so I'm going to try to back down here. I try to go in and snipe it, but I realize the bunker can hit me, and I don't know what happened there. I don't know if it bugged out or something. But either way, that's really bad. That's exactly what you don't want to do: is lose a goon like that. Because if he's doing some sort of aggressive play, now you're down one goon. And then, right as I expanded there, which is usually around 28, I think, uh, right as I expanded, I add a second gate, and then right after that, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my robotics, because you want observers as quickly as possible. And you also have the option, after expanding, to get a shuttle and go for a reaver. And as you can see right there, I'm transferring probes to this new expansion, and you always wanna do that, because if you don't transfer probes, and just start building them from the new expansion, it's gonna have like one or two probes, and so on, for quite a long time. So it's like an extra minute or two that's essentially a useless expansion that you build for no reason. So you always want to transfer probes right away to each new expansion so that they're instantly functional and you actually are on two bases. So I've got my observatory done and I'm getting and I see siege, so I'm gonna back up. Basically I'm just sitting here in the natural because I want to delay any attempt of his to expand. And you can just it's just kind of being a pain, like he can't go land the command center, so it makes him take a little bit longer because he has to leapfrog tanks a little further out and it just delays his command center by 20 seconds maybe. Which, while not game changing, Starcraft is a game where little advantages really add up, so you just want to do what you can. So now I've got two get goons, I'm getting an ops, and depending on what I think, like, but considering the fact that Terran doesn't have his natural yet, he built this bunker, I'm confident he's either ridiculously passive or just bad, probably a combination of both, so I feel comfortable expanding and getting a third. In PvT, you always want to get your third pretty fast. Now this is quite fast. This is basically double expand because I'm just doing it off two gates. Probably the safest way to do it is to get three gates and then expand while making dragoons. So you'll probably expand again once you have maybe eight to ten goons. And then get those obs out because what you want to do is get the observers out and you need to, need to go check Terran's factory count. And if you see him adding factories like right after he expands and he's getting more than two, that means he's probably going to try and timing push you, which, what that means is that when you go take that third because you're getting it fast, that leaves a vulnerable window where you don't have as many units because you just spent that money on the third nexus and you haven't started adding more gateways yet, so you're kind of vulnerable. So Terran will try to push you and contain or kill an expansion while you're in that vulnerable weak phase. So you want to see that, and if he's doing the timing push, you want to add gateways and then what you gotta do is you gotta move up to his base with the goons and you gotta stall him because you need time to get a round or two of units out of your new gateways because once you add that third if you see timing push you know add probes cut probes if you need to like stop building them and add and get to like six or seven gateways and then just try to stall him so what you do is when he's unseized you kinda run in with your goons and then if he starts to siege up then you back out and then when he unseizes you run back in you just wanna try and delay him and slow him down as much as possible before he gets to your base, so you, if you can if you can get that round or two out of your now six or seven plus gates, 
you'll easily be able to kill this push because now you're getting the advantage of your third base. But right now, I'm incredibly far ahead. I mean, he hasn't even taken his natural. If he was playing properly, he would have this three minutes ago or whatever. He's being super conservative. So I'm going in the nurse scout with my observer. Kind of have to lose these goons going across the pitch. And since his natural is so late, I'm not even worried about a timing push because it's just going to fail. So I don't have to immediately add more gates. And as you can see there, what I'm doing with the pylons of the forge is that's just making a wall so that vultures can't run in there. So it just gives me one less expansion I have to worry about getting harassed by vultures. And usually after you take your third, it's a good idea to get a forge because you want to start getting some upgrades. And more importantly, it lets you build a cannon or two at each expansion for vultures. But don't start building cannons until you have at least three expansions because, or at least two expansions, three bases, because otherwise they're just going to be completely useless. Like, you don't need cannons to defend two bases. It's just your goons can easily defend that. Just have a couple pulled back and you'll be totally fine against Vulture and Rats as long as you've got an Ops hanging back there. And then a decent Terran is going to be out laying mines a little bit around the map, so it's usually good to have a squad of a few goons, maybe five, six, and an Ops running around the map just kind of looking for the Vultures and clearing out mines. So, as I was talking about earlier with the timing push, see, he's just finally, just now, starting to build this natural. I mean, this is so late. I've basically won at this point. I would have to make some colossal mistake to lose, just because I've already got three bases, and he doesn't even have a second yet. So he's way behind. But, and as you can see here, since I knew he wasn't going to be a threat, uh, I start teching. And you want to get your citadel up, usually pretty quickly after you get your third, so you can get leg speed. That really helps her fighting off any pushes. And then you can start teching to Arbiters. And if you see Terran going for, the most typical is a fast third, so what you'll see is they'll stay on two factories, they'll probably start to have an armory or two and a starport. You see that kind of stuff, and they're not adding factories beyond two or three, that means they're not going to time and push you, and they're just going to get a fast third. So in that case, what you can do, you've got a few options. You can go for three base arbiters, which is usually what I like to do. You can try to mass gateways, go to like nine gateways, and deny their third when they come out, try to be a pain. Or you can go ahead and get a, a really quick fourth base. It's just kind of up to how you like to play. But against T, against Terran, the big advantage you have is that Terran is slow and immobile. So you're really free to expand a lot. Like if you tried to do this kind of stuff against some of the Protoss or Zerg, it's just going to fail because, like, if it's Protoss versus Protoss and you're taking these expansions and not adding gateways, it's a mere matchup, so if your opponent has six gateways, seven gateways, and you have, you know, three or four because you're expanding all over the place, he's just going to have way more units you're going to lose. But because Terran's slow and takes a long time to move across the map, you can safely expand a lot like this. So I'm getting my fourth, and like I said, if, if, it's, if the Terran's going for a fast third, which basically means they are going to take their third off to maybe three factories, then you just need to expand and tech, and you want to get both Templars and Arbiters, because they're really important, because a, a maxed out, upgraded Terran 200-200 army is the strongest army in the game. Like, if you just try to fight that, unless you catch him, like, completely unsieged, you're just going to get steamrolled over by it. So, what you need is Storms and Stasis from Arbiters to equalize the playing field. Storms is pretty self-explanatory, you want to cast them over clumps of vultures or tanks. And the Arbiters, they're nice, I mean, they cloak your units, but any decent Terran's going to have scans, and science vessels to see cloak stuff, so that's not the main reason you get them. The main reason you get them is for stasis, and if there's any, any clumps of tanks you see, you want to stasis those clumps of tanks. Because when you stasis them, sure you can't kill them, but it takes half his tanks out of battle. And because tanks do splash damage, the effects of that are so cumulative that when you take, you know, if he's got 20 tanks and you suddenly cut him down to, you know, 10 to 15, his army's damage just goes way down, and you can probably kill him pretty easily. So stasis is a must-have, and storm is really good. And one of the things you can do is, you might have three or four high templars with your army, but if the Terran is decent and using his vultures well, he can like snipe those templars off with his vultures. So it's a good idea, and also they can get EMP'd by science vessels, so it's a good idea to keep four of them just in a shuttle, and then as you run into battle, you can just drop them out of the shuttle. And like I said, this Terran's just so far behind now, you know, that I'm taking the fifth base, it doesn't even matter. And the idea is, you just keep expanding and adding gates, and this matchup 